Stuck in Sweden, some in Norway, Staffordshire as well, and Sussex. Uh, so a lot has been covered. So I won't, I won't make any attempt to, to, to sum up. Um, there's been loads of really good presentations. Um, there's been a fantastic buzz about the whole, the whole day as well. Uh, lots of buzz, lots of interaction, lots of, lots of din, lots of chaos, lots of noise. And I think actually if a measure of how well the day has been is how difficult it's been to get you back from chatting, uh, either over lunch or over tea break, and I think this, this conference has gone pretty well. So I think the measure of the, of the benefit of this conference has been the level of chaos. Actually. So that's well done everybody. Um, I think uh, Chris McInnes made a really good point this morning. That was about, you know, we represent a sector, don't we? I mean, it's not really a criticism because that's how this target, this 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 uh, conference was targeted. But we are the same sort of people, aren't we? Uh, maybe we should be talk talking to other people. But there again, I look around the audience and I think, well, who who is actually here? Yes, we have the normal suspects, the wildlife charities. We have have other other charities as well. We have got some local authorities. We've got some government bodies. Got the natural environment. Got we've got uh, Natural England. The Environment Agency, we've even got the Forestry Commission somewhere, or has he gone home? Um, and so, as alongside we've got the government bodies, we've got other people as well. We've got academics, we've got some landowners in the audience, some, some, some fishermen, some anglers, we've got uh, residents associations, uh, we've even got people from Staffordshire. So we've actually got quite a wide spectrum here. Um, and actually, if you think about it, 30 years ago, 20 years ago even, perhaps some of these people might have been considered the enemy, the sort of people that would be very uncomfortable to be here. That's just not the case anymore, is it? These are the, although our sector is still a sector and we can still be criticised for talking to the same people, that sector has got fuzzy edges now, which I think is a really good sign of health. And what's more, I say if you go to other sectors, if you go to the forestry se se sector, the landowning sector, the aggregate sector, then you'll also find that they've also got fuzzy edges. And that actually it's not like going into a lion's den anymore, it's not like talking to strangers. I think this again is a healthy sign. And what's doing that? And I think there's two things that are finding their time which are doing that and which are most exemplified in what we're doing with wetlands. And that's the language around, although perhaps not the terms, the language around landscape ecology and ecosystem services. I think that's most focused on things like wetland environments. Landscape ecology, what do I mean by that? Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse thought from me anyway, is that when you think about landscape ecology, you're not only thinking about the pattern, you know, where the species are, where the habitats are, you're also thinking about the process, what's driving that whole habitat, what are the things affecting that, those habitats and species. And you can't avoid that with wetland. You think about wetlands, you think about wetland habitats, you're thinking about water, you're thinking about hydrology, you're thinking about other things like grazing and succession and so on as well. But in wetlands, it's the, probably the habitat where it's perhaps easiest to think about landscape ecology, pattern, as well as process. You can't have a wet meadow in a dry valley, can you? So you inevitably have to think about process. So we're starting to think much more about functional ecosystems. And that puts us, even if the terms aren't really familiar to people, that starts to align us with other people as well. Having a good place, having a good ecosystem, having a living landscape. But then you move on from that as well, around the subject of ecosystem services. Somebody said earlier on that we, we might end up talking to, the same, talk, talking to the same people or when we talk to other people about preserving wildlife, we'll just be called buddy huggers, won't we? It's pretty familiar to a lot of people in the audience, I would guess. But actually, if you're talking about not looking after wildlife by itself, important though that is, if you're talking about other things, like the services you get from a healthy functioning environment, then it starts to put you on the same playing field as other people. So I think this, this language which has been building up today about ecosystem services uh, is actually vitally important. Yes, of course there are dangers. You can't put values on everything. You can't put price on everything. Uh, an attempt to value everything, I think some scientists have said, has been like trying to, like making a poor approximation of infinity. But the whole concept of ecosystem services is proving very helpful to us. There, there is benefit to all humans for having healthy functioning ecosystems, and perhaps that's best exemplified by wetland habitats. So, when I start to think about, well, you know, what are the conclusions? Where are we going? What's going to be, what's the world going to look like in 10 years' time if this conference and what follows uh, shows some success? What will it be like in 10 years' time? Well, we're already kind of started. In my mind, the, uh, an improvement will be um, catchment scale working on, the, on every catchment in, throughout Sussex, not just in one or two, not just a few pilots, but it will be the normal way of working, a catchment scale approach. Now, what will that mean in practice? Well, greater awareness of wetlands from, from everybody. Greater, greater awareness of wetlands, greater awareness of our water footprint. I love that slide of those footprints made up of drops of water. It really captured it well. 
So a greater awareness of our, our water footprint. So a greater awareness of the benefits that are provided by wetlands and wetland ecosystems. Benefits like the, the obvious ones, recreation, we know, know about recreation. Sense of place, spiritual enrichment, what it is to be in Pagham Harbour, Cookmere Valley and so on. That's determined by the nature of, of, of the ecosystem. But also other things which do have financial values, whether you recognise it or not. Things like flood risk re reduction, we've heard about that today. How about water, water purification? The need to, to <coughs> treat water less because it's coming from a healthy functioning ecosystem. Things like that. Reduced erosion, reduced runoff, reduced <coughs> nutrient enrichment because the whole thing is, 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 is functioning better. Provision of drinking water. Um, carbon sequestration, climate regulation, local climate regulation as well. Nutrient cycling, soil formation, and of course food. So all of these things are perhaps the product of a healthy functioning ecosystem. If we talk about those things rather than, or rather as well as talking about wildlife or wildlife sake, we're likely to get into talking to other sectors um, as well as we do to our own sector. And I think it's a sign, these, these fuzzy boundaries between what we used to think of as sectors is a sign that that's what's actually happening. So, as well as all these benefits, what's the future going to be like? Well, I don't know, an otter and an osprey in every village pond, perhaps, in the future. <laughs> I can dream. Anyway, uh, it just reminds me to say a very warm thank you to everybody that's been involved today. Uh, all the speakers, fantastic. It's 13, lucky for some, 13 speakers. Uh, all incredible, it's been a real romp through a large number of subjects, so thank you very much indeed to all the, all the speakers. A big thank you also to the people who've organised this conference, in particular Frank Southgate, Chris Joyce, and to Meg DeGroke, Meg DeGroke who, who made all this possible. I know it's been the brainchild for some time now, so thank you very much to the people who've organised it, and thank you for all, to all of you for coming. It was pretty easy to fill the room, so thanks very much indeed for coming.